Dear fellow truth seekers, thank you and welcome for visiting my channel, Mitha Religio. Mitha Religio is a video channel based on a book series with the same name about religious comparison studies between the stories in Judaism, Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, and Buddhism, directly from their sacred books and world mythologies, hence the name Mitha Religio. The purpose is to retrace the prehistory of humanity, since I'm not fully satisfied with either the explanations from the point of view of creationists nor evolutionists. There are so many missing links in both explanations. If you feel the same, then you are on the right channel. In this channel, I will also analyze about the prehistory of humanity from the archaeological records, modern scientific point of view, and other alternative theories such as the ancient alien theories and Atlantis or Lemuria legends. After thorough research of circa 30 years, I recognize many, many similarities between all religious stories and even mythologies, and surprisingly, some of them are in accordance or even beyond modern science that have been proven as correct. Thus, I came to the conclusion that all religions must have come from the same source, and all these religious stories and mythologies, although heavily jumbled up, are actually telling one mega story, the true prehistory of our common ancestors. This mega story is quite different than what we have been told to believe and will truly blow your mind as it is more fascinating than our imagination. If you have watched the earlier videos in this channel, I believe you can see some of the similarities too. If you haven't and you truly want to do a religious comparative study, I suggest that you do so. The best way to do a comprehensive religious study via this channel is by watching the videos starting from number one and continue until this present video and so on. That way you will see a clear pattern. In this channel, I will share almost all that I have written in my book series. However, there is one book so far that I cannot share in this channel due to its sensitive, shocking and dark nature and also might be considered controversial to some, but I believe it sheds more light to the above conclusion. If you want to read this around 500 pages ebook with many full color illustrations, you are more than welcome to download book number 5 entitled History of the Dark Side that is available for free in ebook format that can be found in my website www.mythorelligio.com You only have to give your email address and it will be sent to you directly. And no, I won't share your email address nor send any advertisement. The link is in the description box. If you want to get the physical book, kindly go to amazon.com Now let's continue with this week's video. Video number 70 Science versus Religion, Problem with the Timeline in the Theory of Evolution Dear fellow truth seekers, For the last few weeks I have shared with you the scientific theories on the origin of life, i.e. the theory of evolution and the Big Bang Theory, for our religious versus science comparison study. I did this in order to find answers to the questions that are not answered satisfactorily by religion. Up from video number 66 until 68, I have shared with you how we have yet to find one single intermediary form between species from water to land animals, from land to flying animals, and from apes to humans. And in the last video, I have shared with you one of the biggest hoaxes in the scientific world in an attempt to prove the validity of the hominid evolution, i.e. the Piltdown Man scandal. Now, I would like to share with you more arguments that disprove the theory of evolution that is the problem with its timeline. Problem with the timeline What we have seen so far forms a clear picture. The process of human evolution is not as clear-cut as we are led to believe. The questionability of this theory does not stop here. In order to draw an evolutionary family tree that represents the truth, the gradual evolution from ape to man must have taken place, and
and a fossil record of this process should be able to be found. Then, the early human's timeline is supposed to look like the above illustration, which is still used widely today. Allow me to repeat quickly what I have shared in video number 66. According to the evolution theory, the following four main categories are listed. 1. Australopithecus 2. Homo habilis 3. Homo erectus and 4. Homo sapiens Australopithecus, meaning southern ape, is categorized as the ape-like ancestors of men. In Greek, the word Australis means south and Pithecus means ape. It was named for the fact that it lived in modern-day South Africa. It was the first of many hominid species to be discovered on the African continent. Supposedly, the living beings in the Homo or human series are more developed than Australopithecus and not very much different from today's men. Homo sapiens or modern man is supposedly the latest stage of the evolution of the Homo genus. The truth, however, as we have analyzed previously, kindly watch video number 66 until 68, Australopithecus and Homo habilis are reclassified as apes, while Homo erectus is reclassified as fully human. The missing link remains missing. Another significant finding proving that there can be no family tree relationship among these different species is that species that are presented as ancestors of others in fact lived concurrently. If Australopithecus evolved or changed into Homo habilis, which in turn turned into Homo erectus, the periods they lived in should necessarily have followed each other. However, there is no such chronological order to be seen in a fossil record. Ellen Walker confirms this fact by stating that there is evidence from East Africa for late surviving small Australopithecus individuals that were contemporaneous first with Homo habilis, then with Homo erectus. Ellen Walker, Science, Volume 207, 1980, page 1103. Louis Leakey has found fossils of Australopithecus, Homo habilis, and Homo erectus almost next to each other in the Olduvai Gorge region of Tanzania in the Bed 2 layer. J. Kelso, Physical Anthropology, 1st edition, New York, J. B. Lippincott Co., 1970, page 221, M. D. Leakey, Olduvai Gorge, Volume 3, Cambridge, Cambridge University Press, 1971, page 272. So, there is definitely no such family tree. Stephen Jay Gould, who was a paleontologist from Harvard University, explained this deadlock faced by evolution, although he was an evolutionist himself. What has become of our ladder if there are three coexisting lineages of hominids, Australopithecus africanus, the robust Australopithecines, and Homo habilis. None clearly derive from another. Moreover, none of these three displays an evolutionary trend during their tenure on Earth. Stephen Jay Gould, Natural History, Volume 85, 1976, page 30. When we move on from Homo erectus to Homo sapiens, we again see that there is no family tree to define. There is evidence showing that Homo erectus and Homo sapiens archaic continued living up to 27,000 years and even as recently as 10,000 years before our time. The coast swam in Australia, some 13,000 years old Homo erectus skulls have been found. In the island of Java, Homo erectus remains were found that are 27,000 years old. Time magazine, November 1996. The most interesting and significant fact that should nullify the very basis of the family tree of evolutionary theory is the unexpectedly ancient history of contemporary man. Paleoanthropological findings reveal that Homo sapiens people who looked exactly like us were living as long as one million years ago. 
Meanwhile, conventional study place modern men, i.e. Homo sapiens, at between 200,000 to 300,000 years ago in Africa. It was Louis Leakey, the famous evolutionist paleoanthropologist, who discovered the first findings on this subject. In 1932, in the Kanjera region around Lake Victoria in Kenya, Leakey found several fossils that belonged to the Middle Pleistocene and that were no different from today's men. However, the Middle Pleistocene was a million years ago. LSB Leakey, the origin of Homo sapiens. Since these discoveries turned the evolutionary family tree upside down, they were dismissed by some evolutionist paleoanthropologists. Yet, Leakey was contended that his estimates were correct. Just when this controversy was about to be forgotten, a fossil unearthed in Spain in 1995 revealed in a very remarkable way that the history of Homo sapiens was much older than had been assumed. The fossil in question was uncovered in a cave called Grandolina in the Atapuerco region of Spain by three Spanish paleoanthropologists from the University of Madrid. The fossil revealed the face of an 11 years old boy who looked entirely like men of our day. However, it had been 800,000 years since the child died. Discover magazine covered the story in great detail in its December 1997 issue. This fossil even shook the convictions of Juan Luis Arzuaga Ferreras, who lead the Grandolina excavation. Ferreras said, We expected something big, something large, something inflated, you know, something primitive. Our expectation of an 800,000 year old boy was something like Turkana boy, and what we found was a totally modern face. To me, this is most spectacular. These are the kind of findings that shake you. Finding something totally unexpected like that. Not finding fossils. Finding fossils is unexpected too, and it's okay. But the most spectacular thing is finding something you thought belonged to the present in the past. It's like finding a tape recorder in Grandolina. That would be very surprising. You don't expect cassettes and tape recorders in the lower Pleistocene. Finding a modern face 800,000 years ago is the same thing. We were very surprised when we saw it. Is this the face of our past? Discovery, December 1997. The fossil highlighted the fact that the history of Homo sapiens had to be extended back to 800,000 years ago. After recovering from the initial shock, the evolutionist who discovered the fossil decided that it belonged to a different species, because according to evolutionary family tree, Homo sapiens did not live 800,000 years ago. So now, there is a genus created called Homo antecessor, and the Atapuerco skull is included under this classification. Wow! Dear fellow truth seekers, to me, there are more than enough arguments to disprove the theory of evolution. There are too many unanswered questions in this theory. You wonder why this theory is still taught in schools and universities? I suggest that you read my fifth book, Mytho Religio, History of the Dark Side, that can be downloaded for free in my website. The link is in the description box. There are still more issues in the theory of evolution that I will share in my next video or videos. But since it is again different topics, I'm ending this short video here for now. I thank you for watching and hope to see you next week.